Hey there. Today we're going to be doing a tutorial I wanted to do for quite some time. It's how to install a switch into something like the dash to your car, center panel, some console, something like that. Basically any panel inside a vehicle. It can be quite difficult for a lot of people to wrap their heads around, but it's actually fairly simple if you uh, take a few steps and watch this tutorial. It'll help you guide you right through it. So let's get started. Alright, this is your average toggle switch that they're on the market nowadays. They're dime a dozen. Uh, this one is actually a broken one. It uh, broke shortly after I got it. Joey's buying stuff from China. You know, it's a gamble. Everybody knows that. So you get cheap prices, but if you get one that breaks, uh, so be it. Anyway, so on here there are these clips. I'm sorry about the camera work, it's kind of hard to see. Um, there's these clips that actually go into the dash and they spread out so that it locks it in place. They're on both sides. Um, a lot of people might think that they need to go down and mount to the bottom part of the switch behind this faceplate that goes on the outside of the, the dash or panel. But you actually measure to this clip because that's the biggest point, right? Not the biggest point on the clip itself, but the smallest of the biggest points on the clip. That'll allow you to get it through the hole that you create and it'll also hold it in place. Um, you could try going down to this bottom part and it does work but it's kind of a pain to get it in there. So for intents and purposes today I'm going to make it a little simpler and we'll go from here and then when it comes to mounting we'll just put um, I like to put a little hot glue or something on it just to secure it so they don't wobble around. You don't have to, the clips will hold it in place, but I'm one of those kind of guys go do a little extra mile. So first of all, if you have them, these calipers are indispensable for this kind of thing. They work really well. So you'll measure on this clip, like I said, not the largest part of the, the tallest part of the clip, but the smallest part of the outside clips there. And I'm not sure if you can actually see that so well, where I'm putting it. It's hard with the lighting, but they're going on those clips right here. Right there. So we've got that measured on these calibers, and we'll tighten that in place so we know where we're at. Next thing you want to do is figure out how you want your switch oriented. Do you want it sitting this way or do you want it sitting this way, right? And it's going to just matter as to where you put it. So for this one, we'll make it easy on ourselves and we'll put it here. And you put a pencil mark on both of those. It doesn't have to be that uh, strong, just enough so that you can see it. And the next thing we'll do is with this one, it's a little easier because you don't have to worry about those clips. So you just measure to the outside housing of the switch itself. As you can see that where those are sliding in there. So this base plate, like I said before, that's the plate that mounts up against the dash. We're going to put it right up snug with that on the just the tips of the calipers. You don't have to use calipers. I find them very very useful but a ruler and a little extra time and whatnot you can do it with just a your ordinary ruler as long as you just take precautions to get the exact right measurements and stuff on there and it's not overly difficult so now we've got that one going there and we decided we were going to put this in this way right so now we'll take that centered to where we want it roughly and as long as these lines intersect, that's all you're really looking for, and have it straightened out. Okay, and you can do the same thing down below so that you get a proper measurement, but more likely you'll end up doing it, eyeballing it by a ruler. And when you set this up, you'll have to set the orientation of your switch where you want it and kind of map it out in your head or on paper or pencil lines on the actual panel itself like I'm doing here so that you know if it's going to be straight like 
because if you have your panel in place, just because you have a straight line here doesn't mean that's where the switch is going to be oriented inside the vehicle to make it look aesthetically pleasing. So don't just obviously trust this line. I mean, you might go by the the dash of the door. You might go by a panel that's above it for the stereo or something so that it, it looks straight to you. And then when you can kind of just quickly pencil that in so that you know when you're setting up your actual cut lines roughly where you want it and how it's going to look and whatnot. Another very important thing to look at is where you're mounting it behind. So if you have your your clips here which actually are structural and hold it into the dash of the vehicle you obviously don't want to be cutting on the opposite side of that and cut one of these out if you can help it. Another video we might touch into how to do that but for this one we're just going to stick with the same basics. So the other thing is look what's behind it. Or just because you're going to mount the switch here doesn't mean you have enough room behind that to mount it. And on top of that, remember this switch is also broken, so it's a lot longer than that. Plus you have any pigtail wires and stuff that you might be adding to come off of that itself, right? So you're going to have a switch that's something like that when it's completed. So you need to have at least that much space behind the switch panel to fit that. Um, in some vehicles behind the panels and stuff like that there's another panel that it butts up against and that might just be a panel in front of it and then it's dead it, dead space behind it. So you can, tr if it's not structural, you can trim that away in order to fit in your switches or panel boxes or relays, whatever you happen to be needing for that particular project. So now we've got it to this point. The next thing you're going to need is a rotary tool. Be it a Dremel, be it a Wen, whatever you happen to have. As long as you have a rotary tool with a regular cutoff blade in it. I mean, you can use the larger ones if that suits you. You can use the smaller ones. It really doesn't matter as long as you have a cutoff blade. And we'll get into that after. But we're going to be using the cutoff blade to go through the panel. Now, a lot of people might think that you just plunge it in and then cut. That is not going to work. It, it will work, but you'll end up with skewed lines and whatnot. What you want to do is you want to plunge it in, pull it out, move it down a little bit again, plunge it in slowly, down, and again further on down the line. Remembering that when you're cutting here, when you get up to the intersections of these lines here, and this is pretty important. When you get to the intersection of these lines, remember the wheel is bigger on the top or the bottom than it is on the top. So when you're cutting through here and your wheel is only coming to say there on the top portion of it, on the bottom, it's actually coming to here underneath, right? So you have to take that into account. Um, you're going to get a deeper, longer cut on one side of the panel than you are on the other. So when you come into that, you need to take precautions as to only go to where you're going to see the cut intersect the line, and then the rest of that you'll take off with um, it's one of those standard box cutters. Everybody's got one, except apparently me at this exact moment. There we go. So you'll just end up with a, a box cutter, or if that isn't going to cut it, <laughs> literally no pun intended there, um, if uh, that isn't going to cut it, then you can use a knife, but you can heat it up. And if you heat up like a, an old blade, and we're not talking something that you value for anything other than doing that, because once you heat it, it, it definitely changes that blade forever. So you can heat it and then use it to trim through the rest without having much of a problem. But I haven't had to do that very often, and I've done a lot of these, so your Dremel or rotor tool is usually enough to do that. Now, <clears throat> again, for mounting it, it depends on how permanent you want it to be. Is this going to be something that you're going to have there, use a lot, and like switching it on daily or several times a day kind of a thing, then you may want to, once you get it mounted in place, put a couple dabs of hot glue on the back and let that sit in place before you mount your wires and everything. Let it actually stick in place. 
that'll give it some added s security. So when it's being moved and jostled and driving and the switching and on and off and whatnot, that it's going to hold a lot tighter and not be prone to starting to wiggle and whatnot, which can lead to wire loosage and shorts and everything else. So. Um, there are other things you can do, we'll get into as well. We'll you'll sand the edges, get any bits of plastic off there, do some trimming with the box cutter to get the, any remnants of the plastic, because it, it does a combination of both cutting and kind of melting the plastic at the same time, so you end up with some splatter and some plastic slag that sticks in places that um, trims off nice and easily with the box cutter. We talked about going the depth depth behind the the panel itself with your wire depth and whatnot. Um, check your clips and that. Make sure you're not cutting through these. They're important. They're not indispensable. You can work around them, like I said, and we'll get into that later. But it's more of an advanced kind of a trait, and you need some specialty glues and whatnot, and understanding of how that's actually all going to go together. So make sure that you have your room behind it, make sure that your wire routes from where you're going to and from on this panel, you when you have your switch in place on the other side, however you're going to mount it, that the wires aren't going to have to come out and do a hard 90 or you know they can go straight through for a bit so that you're not surprised when you get it in place and go, oh man, I've cut this hole in my dash and it's not in the right place. or the wire is touching up against this or you know any of those little things basically what i'm saying is put some forethought into this T sit down take pictures draw it out on a piece of paper um what i like to do is i go out with my phone or camera or whatever and i take pictures of the plates in different stages of dis or disassembly and what's behind them and whatnot so that when i'm in the house and i'm actually working on it if i'm not doing this in place I have a clear view on my phone of what is there. So I can go, oh, what was that wire? How is this going to hit there? And I can scroll through, look and go, no, I'm okay. Or no, we got to change that. And a little tip that uh, it helps out a lot. That said, I guess I should have started with, I prefer to remove the panels to do this. Um, it's a lot easier to do on a workbench or, you know, even outside on the sidewalk or whatever than it is to do in place in a lot of places on the vehicle. In the older days, the panels used to be a pain in the butt to get off. Now they're really easy. I know got a 2004 Durango, and the panels come on and off so easy that it's a breeze. It's a dream for wiring. Like you can get right up into the ceiling and stuff, and you only have to remove a few panels. And you can run your wires in and out of there all day long, and it's not breaking things or you know frustrated getting them back on and off. So when it's that easy, take the time, take it off bring it in, map it out, and um, take your time with it. If it's worth doing, it's worth doing right. It's my motto. So, from there, we're going to take a quick pause, and we'll come back when it's time for cutting. Alright, let's get down to the actual cutting. So, first thing we're going to do is take our Dremel, turn this so I can actually see it. And like I said, we're going to use a plunging action, not a cutting action. Stopping short of those lines, and on the other side, you can see. Making sure your finger's not underneath the cutting area.
Okay, like I said, you end up with a lot of slag on here. Now, I showed you the cutting of it. I did the plunge and then I slowly moved the blade. I also cut on the inside of the line that I made. So if there's any adjustments to be made, I still have more plastic left. If I was to cut on the outside of the line and not taking into account the width of the actual blade itself, I would end up with a, a sloppier fit. This way I can always take more off. It's a lot harder to put it back on. So, and like I said, with the box cutter, we'll take care of any corners and that that didn't. Be very careful with doing what I'm doing, cutting towards yourself. It is a recipe for disaster and you shouldn't actually do it, but I tend to do that from time to time despite what I might tell my son or other people. much further try and see how it's gonna fit and just because it doesn't fit perfect the first time doesn't mean you're in serious trouble like I said you want it to be a tighter fit so now you can start trimming away carefully little bits at a time Trying to stay close to those lines that we've made earlier and straighten it up. If you have to redo the lines, take the time and do it so that you don't end up with a big problem. It's easier to fix a small problem than it is a large one. So, getting relatively close on this. direction and then going back at it. You can make little cuts in the corners straight down or up close to the edge that way when you do cut towards you it's going to fall off and not end up kind of going a lot further than what you actually intended to do. A little safety for your keep your measurements intact. Okay. Almost there. Another little bit. Like I said before, keep your slices in that small. And you can always take more off, but like I said, putting it back on is a lot more difficult. And there you have it. It's a nice tight fit on the back side. The clips, like I mentioned, they hold it in place. And then you can put a little couple dabs of hot glue around the outside edge and that switch will not go anywhere. <laughs>